Today we're gonna talk about our new snake that we just got, but first I wanna go over a little thing from last week's video. So as you guys remember, I talked about California king snakes last week, and I asked you guys to give this girl a name. So we originally called her Dot, which was stunningly unoriginal, and we decided to put it up to you guys to give her a better name. So what we actually chose was Luna. So if you see these dots over here, there's some half moons, there's some uh, crescent moons, I guess you could say, every phase of the moon on her as far as her dots go. So her name will be Luna. So as you guys can see, we are in a different room and I'll explain a little bit about that. So when you first get a new animal in, you're gonna wanna quarantine it. Why do you quarantine it and what is quarantine? Well, quarantine is keeping the animal basically separate from the rest of your collection. And why do you do that, especially for adult animals coming in? That's because whether it's baby or an adult, you never know if it may unintentionally have something like mites or some type of sickness that you don't want to spread to your whole collection. So what do you do? You keep it separate from your collection. So I never touch this snake and then go clean the other snakes or go play with the other snakes. Um, I keep them in a totally separate part of the room than my other snakes and I try not to cross mingle as much as possible even though there are no obvious signs of sickness or obvious signs of anything in this snake. You still want to take precaution because it's not worth all your collection that you've worked so hard on to put them in danger anyway. So that's why we take this precaution. Also, I'm gonna show you a little bit of the setup for this snake, but uh, let's get into it. So if you follow us on Instagram, you've probably already seen this girl. We got her just a few days ago. She did give me a good must when I picked her up. Um, the previous owner was getting rid of this girl because they were just looking for more of a pet and she's not that handleable. When you first go in, she gives you a good rattle and then S's up and uh, she's just a little reactive. Once you get her out, she's pretty good. She did musk on me a little bit, but uh, she's just so beautiful. Um, she is a little overweight from the last owner and it almost looks like she could be carrying infertile eggs because she is a little bit bumpy on the back third of her body and to me that looks like a pregnant female. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, we'll just take it as it comes. Uh, the good part is that we'll know that it's definitely a female if that happens and if you have been following us for any amount of time, we for some reason always tend to get these females that turn out being males and it kind of has ruined a few kink snake projects for us so we're really hoping this girl's a female. I haven't probed her or done any of that but it does appear to be that way. And uh, just really, really great having this animal in our collection, as well as having a, you know, a morph of California king snake. You've seen our other California king snakes. We have a banded, and we have a dotted. So those are just two pattern mutations that are just kind of line bred into the animal. So this girl is striped, which is one of those patterns, but she is also albino. And I just love the albino cow kings. They have this bluish purplish hue to them, as well as this just electric yellow color. It's hard to get on camera here, but we will get some good B-roll of her. Oh, you can kind of see it there. But look at that purple and yellow. There she is looking right into the camera for you. So like other albinos, they do have red eyes. Check it out. Doesn't get much better than this. See, I never forgot why people have other species, things like ball pythons. They're just would pray for colors like these. But then again, you can get a cow king like this for like $100 and it'd be so beautiful and people don't really care about it. So that's kind of my goal with this channel is to show you guys things that I like and things that I find fascinating that I really want people to appreciate and you don't have to break the bank to do it and they make good pets. So this is certainly one of those animals. Now if you guys are wondering about the care for the California king snake, I did post a video last week that kind of outlines a bunch of the care. Um, what I probably didn't mention was that I feed those animals every two to three weeks in adult mouse 
and that for babies, you're gonna be doing a little bit different. You're gonna be feeding them every single week. I also like to, for colubrids at least, I don't have experience breeding king snakes yet, so when I do, I will make a breeding king snakes video. I've heard it's very, very similar to corn snakes and you pretty much go about it the same way, but I'd like to know from experience, so when I do that, I will make a video. And also getting the baby started, I would probably feed every four days in the beginning, then bring it out to a week once I get them established. But uh, these guys usually don't have much of a hard time feeding from what I hear. But I mean, there's just not many other places where you can get color like that. Maybe in things like retics you get those purples and yellows, but um, this is just a beautiful, beautiful animal. So allow me to go through a little bit of the setup of the California king snake and then also the quarantine setup. So here we have water bowl, which is going to be a deli cup. This one is a solo deli cup. I believe it's eight ounces or something like that. And then this, ooh, girl, calm down. She's very defensive of her enclosure. Once she's out, as you can see, she was pretty good, but she did give me a good must to begin with, and she is given a good tail rattle here, and is being a little uppity, so uh, we're just gonna avoid her, and then try to get her to settle down. So this is basically just a storage container that I cut a hole in, and just to make a little hide in the meantime. So I have this guy in here, as well as Aspen. So Aspen, I have about three inches of Aspen, which is going to allow her to burrow, and that's just gonna add an extra layer of security for when, since she's settling in and she's clearly not very secure, she's pretty uppity, a lot of times she'll burrow under the substrate. It will give her a little extra security and she'll feel more comfortable. So that's kind of what I'm going for. Some of the other animals that I do quarantine, I will put them on paper towel or newspaper just to make sure if anything comes off, anything like a mite, then I'll be able to see it. So it is a little bit harder to notice if there is something like that in this substrate. Um, for her, it's not a big deal. She's a white and yellow snake. It would be pretty easy to tell, but something like a Mexican black king snake, I would definitely put on newspaper or paper towel. And how long does quarantine last? Quarantine will last anywhere from 30 to 90 days, depending on the animal. And then in 60 days, I'm definitely not handling consecutive animals. I, I will always handle this animal last and or even take a shower. I won't even keep the same clothes on when I do handle this animal to go to another animal. So just keep that in mind not to cross contaminate, kind of act like you're a doctor in surgery or something and just don't mess with a snake that's in quarantine and then plan on doing any other snake stuff after. So just do that last, no matter what, just do your quarantine snake stuff last. Now I mentioned that this is a quarantine setup, but this is essentially how I keep all my California king snakes. It's pretty simple and you can obviously do a more intricate setup. You can definitely have a, uh, like 40 gallon tank, 30 gallon tank with all these features and hides and different stuff. And that's awesome if you want a cool display enclosure, but quite frankly, they're gonna be hiding most of the time. And I find this to be the most effective way. And why don't I use, um, I know some people keep colubrids on newspaper and uh, newsprint or paper towel or something like that. Why I don't do that is because these animals love being under stuff. They love burrowing. Sometimes I'll even put in egg crates to where they can just, in the wild when you're herping, you flip a lot of wood, wood piles and stuff like that. You know, people set down wood boards or sheet metal boards, and then these animals are always right underneath the boards. So they like being in tight, secure, dark, warm places. And I believe that this is one of the best ways to provide that kind of enclosure for them. This is a 28 quart tub, which is kind of the standard adult colubrid tub. So far, so good. I haven't had any problems with keeping them this way. They are really hardy snakes though, so you can keep them almost any which way and they'll do good for you. Um, as you can see, this girl is a little fat. She did uh, get fed real well before we were here, so we are gonna put her on a little bit of a diet after I figure out if there's eggs in there or not. But um, I just don't know of any better looking snake that I've ever seen. Just cause this isn't a uh, cool project that everyone's into and they've been around for a while, it doesn't mean that they're not beautiful snakes and I just want everyone to understand that you don't have to spend, you know, a thousand dollars to get a cool snake or just because a snake isn't expensive doesn't mean that it's not cool and it doesn't mean that it's some expendable pet. It's something to also be cherished and looked at and just admire. So with that being said, 
I have a lot of snakes and I mean, some of the ones that I love the most are pretty much the most simple as far as the hobby goes. You know, things that have been around forever, things that are species that people have been keeping forever and species that people aren't into as much. Unfortunately, back in the day, colubrids, corn snakes, king snakes, uh, milk snakes, these were all giant projects that people were working with. People loved them until exotic stuff started coming in and then obviously the exotic stuff got much more popular than the native stuff here. But quite frankly, these are still some of the most beautiful snakes. They have so many morphs, so many mutations, so many pattern variations. Um, there's just so much work to be done still, even though they've been around for a while. There's no one really focusing on them now. So there may have been really, really cool products in the past that no one's really laser focused on. So there's a lot of room for someone to come in and be line breeding these, be breeding all these different mutations. And they're always in demand for pet owners and they're such great pets and they're easy to keep. So that's really, I should stop going on and on about how cool these things are. But thank you guys so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe. And if you made it this far, you're on the team.